And yeah, great to have Alex with us, flying Happy over from, from Israel, right? Yeah, from yeah. Tel Aviv. Ah, that's nice. Yeah, all the way from there, so that's awesome. And I would say, let's start off with like a sh short introduction about yourself and um, yeah, kin ecosystem and maybe also the kick relation there. That would be great. Cool. So uh, kin was started by uh, kick, a uh, Canadian messenger. Um, that grew very, very fast and literally became a unicorn. So Kin uh, reached uh, more than 300 million users, um, valuation over $1 billion. No. Um, and on its growth, on its uh, path uh, to success, the question of uh, how Kik is going to monetize was a very critical question. Mm -hmm. And um, the world used to know uh, one major way to monetize apps with hundreds of millions of users, yeah. mainly using ads, right? Ah, like yeah. Integrating ads. The old school way. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, and that is not working anymore. It no. didn't work for Kik. It's not working for uh, Snapchat. No. Um, not working for other developers and the main reason is that this industry literally collapsed into a duopole of like Facebook and Google actually um, the only ones that are able to monetize maybe now Amazon because they bought Twitch yeah. but all of the rest um, especially consumer apps uh, can't really monetize in an effective way and on its track uh, to grow and actually find an alternative business model kick issued kin the cryptocurrency yeah. And uh, this is how I started uh, working on Kin. Before working on Kin, I worked um, on other uh, mainly uh, global consumer mobile products. So I was VP product for GetTaxi, for Zlengo, worked on series like social okay, e-commerce, wow. um, and got into blockchain cryptocurrency by working on Kolu, which is another blockchain uh, oh, wow. company. Kin is very, very different from other projects, and I would love to tell you more about it. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely agree with the um, old school ads that they don't work anymore. And that's what I've seen as well, and we talked before this a bit about uh, mainstream apps. So I lived in California for three years now, and there I worked with a lot of the social apps as well. And um, one of them, for example, Madlibs, I've been the CMO there, and that's one of your clients as well let's say it like that um, so yeah very exciting to get a new way into ads or, or like a, an alternative way to monetize because the old school system doesn't work anymore spamming a, um, apps with ads is just not useful and actually social apps a lot of them are really struggling right now so um, this could be a solution for them and that's why it's so exciting yeah. so so we really treat them uh, not as customers, but more of as uh, partners. Yeah. So uh, Kik launched Kin, but now Kin is integrated into more than 30 different apps. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are big and well known, like yeah. uh, Perfect365 and Medlibs. Swelly is another good example. And some of them are new apps being created by uh, our amazing developer community. Uh -huh. So even uh, today we have like developers in the audience uh, building apps that integrate Kin. Uh, Kinid the chat chatbot is just one example. Um, it's an app that allows users on Twitter and on Reddit to tip each other for yeah. the help they're giving each other. Um, and we see tremendous grow, uh, growth through Kin, mainly because of uh, other developers. So oh, okay. Kin is not building um, an infrastructure, is not trying to replace f a fiat currency. Yeah. It's literally enabling developers to integrate it as a currency and use it as an alternative business model and as an alternative user experience for their users. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, very exciting, definitely. And I think Kik is it's great because they're always one step ahead, I feel like. So I remember back in the day when chatbots ca became very popular, I also, um, we went on to that journey and created a chatbot on Kik as well, it was called Foreign Body. And um, that we just did that for fun as well. But I like it that Kik is always going for it for new technologies and right now you're showing that again with the kin ecosystem and i think many of us actually don't like i didn't understand the connection at first i didn't understand that kin is part of kick at the beginning and i think so far you haven't done a lot of press on the kin side and it's a very undiscovered project right now and i think once it goes to the surface basically then people will realize how much in use it is but i like the way you're actually doing this and as you are also the VP of product, you are, you're building the product first and then the marketing comes later. So yeah, big shout out for that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right on both points. So Kik was always first, right? Yeah. It was the first 
uh, chat platform. It was the first uh, chatbot platform. Uh, Kick was the first to integrate video group chat mm -hmm. uh, into its own messenger. Um, but eventually, uh, companies like Facebook literally uh, are copying features. Yeah. Uh, Facebook uh, released uh, video chat like literally a few days afterwards, mm -hmm. and that becomes like a, a very problematic situation not only for Kick but for many other developers that just see the big companies gradually eat their user base by buying uh, other companies and by copying features. Uh, and you also write about like Kin being still under the radar, very early stage, uh, even though there is amazing progress today. Kin is uh, one of the top most used currencies mm. in the world. So when you look like at all of the cryptocurrencies, many of them are mainly used for investment and speculation. Yeah. But wi with Kin, you have uh, literally millions of wallets across many different apps and actual usage, like users actually earning and spending Kin. Yeah. And that is super exciting. And it brings with uh, itself like uh, many different challenges, both technological scale and obviously like user experience and how will millions of users uh, end up using crypto cryptocurrency for real, not only as an investment or speculation. Yeah. Yeah, great points there again. Also on the first point, I think in general, uh, Facebook can't uh, be the first one, so they try to be second because they want to have s someone else try it first and see if it works. And yeah, so they usually just have someone else do it first and then either they buy the company or they copy it themselves. So we've seen that many times. That's when everyone in the startup scene is always scared when Facebook copies you and does uh, something similar, then you might get crushed. So. Um, uh, or you, it might work and then they want to buy you, so of course. And then on the real usage, I think that those are the coins that will actually arise now and those are the ones that we are looking for, everyone is looking for right now. So that's, that's really exciting. And then um, let's talk maybe about how you shifted from the ERC-20 um, model and raised uh, basically the ICO was that model and how now you introduced your own blockchain like I've never heard this before so this is also quite new to me for me so maybe let's maybe want to introduce us to that and why you actually did it yeah yeah so m maybe I'll add just uh, another small point around uh, Facebook I think that the exciting thing with cryptocurrencies and blockchain is that they really allow an, an alternative to the centralized uh, and uh, big entities by decentralizing the power and kin like the kin blockchain is uh, literally run uh, through nodes that each one of the developers is running mm -hmm. um, and I think that gives more power to the developers no. and the network effect is very important because like at some point Facebook will probably launch its own no. currency but I think that by then it will be uh, more beneficial for developers to allow the usage of Kin because as a user I can earn some Kin on Kick, go on Perfect 365, use it there to award uh, makeup artists on 365. Yeah. They can take it, go on Medlibs award like music creators on yeah. Medlibs, um, and many different apps can get value out of that, and the value uh, will not stay centralized. Mm -hmm. so that's very important. Our journey with uh, Kin, the currency itself, was very interesting. We started on uh, Ethereum, like you mentioned, yeah. and very quickly we discovered that uh, we couldn't scale. We reached like 5,000 wallets, and yeah. at 5,000 wallets, CryptoKitties hit. I think I mentioned it yesterday yeah. as well. Um, and literally transactions stopped uh, going through and transaction fees uh, went, went really high and it became um, impossible to uh, allow daily usage uh, mm. of Kin. So we started uh, to look for alternatives. Our mindset is always like try to find a practical solution because we have real usage mm. and the immediate first step we did was to uh, use the Stellar blockchain. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the audience knows most of the projects today uh, on the infrastructure layer are open source. Many of them are forks yeah. and extensions of like other projects. Um, so eventually we ended up uh, forking uh, the Stellar blockchain, uh, customizing it to uh, the unique use cases that we see for online consumer usage. Uh, and today uh, this blockchain allows us uh, to actually continue scaling way uh, faster than was possible uh, mm. before uh, we took this uh, strategic decision. Yeah. And as I, I, I feel mentioned, like there the was also a movement. Developers. There was yeah. a movement, right? So <laughs> over the last months, many moved out and they're trying to, uh, like that Stella got a hype from that as well. Uh, so I felt like Stella really, people started talking about Stella more and more. And uh, so, 
Uh, so we saw Ethereum fading a bit back over the last months in terms of like not just value, but also like how much people talk about it. So, uh, and of course, it has a lot of downward pressure from the ICOs who need to sell Ethereum. But yeah, yeah, yeah I think that uh, many of the projects we see today are really focusing on the infrastructure layer. They are trying to build uh, better, faster, more scalable, mm -hmm. more private, uh, more smart contracts, blockchain. I think that uh, Kin is very unique because we are focusing on the application layer, yeah. on actual like. Uh, usage actual uh, use cases so we're more like the Netscape mm -hmm. of the uh, industry in a way and also Kin is different because we're not trying to replace PayPal or Visa or uh, the US dollar or no. the pound uh, we're literally focusing on changing how value is being used online uh, because the pain today like the internet we know today uh, is not the internet uh, we used to know when the internet started and the pain is not only for developers it's no. also for creators and for us as users right? no. because we become the product our data is being like targeted and retargeted no. um, and there are many challenges in the way the internet works today yeah and then uh, one question I don't know if you can disclose that um, or if you look at the monetization c and compare it to the ads uh, model, can you see already give you us uh, some numbers on wha what you're seeing? Is that like are you is it working better than ads right now? And how are you seeing that uh, for a normal consumer app monetizing with Kin now? So uh. so, so I think that um, the important part is really the change of the mindset and really trying to understand this uh, new business model. I think that uh, the, ins the industry is still very, very young. Yeah. Like you mentioned, our main focus for Keen is not like on the marketing side right now or creating a hype, yeah. but getting the actual usage. Keen will be listed eventually on the major exchanges. Uh, but the business model uh, at its core is very similar to maybe how miners get value from Bitcoin, right? So Kin, like Bitcoin, has a limited a amount. Uh, 10 trillion Kin will be issued eventually, uh, no more. And then Kin is being released not to miners, but to developers. Mm. And if there is enough demand and enough usage and the value of Kin stays stable and grows, developers will be able to sell their kin back to no. the market and actually use that to monetize. So today, uh, our developers are getting uh, grants and awards in kin. No. In the future, we'll have this like almost automatic with the no. kin reward engine. But right now, it's only the start. It's only oh, the beginning. Yeah. And what we see is that most of our developers right now are holding their kin. They are not immediately uh, oh, using okay, that yeah. to monetize. Ah, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of it's it's more than beta version, but it's uh, like it's working and all of that. But right now they don't. It's not. They're not trading it. They don't live from it really right now. But yeah, I uh, think that the important part is the actual usage. Yeah. So uh, developers are integrating Kin mm. and users are actually using Kin. Kin is not so much used for trading at yeah. uh, this point. I think that our entry. Uh, way is very different from other projects. Yeah. We're not focusing on the price of Keen or encouraging anyone to yeah, buy Keen. Yeah. That's not what we're doing. We're focusing on actual use user yeah. adoption on the user experience because w when you think about an app like Kik, introducing a cryptocurrency to millions of users is very, very challenging. We spoke yesterday uh, with Opera and CryptoKitties and you can't give a user, a regular user like our parents or uh, mm. siblings, a cryptocurrency when they need to deal with private keys and oh backups yeah. and restores. And they lose them and yes. yeah, yeah. so, so the we grandma try to make forgets that where to put it. Yeah, so exactly. Put it, yeah. exactly. So, so that's a big challenge, like doing that in a good enough user experience. Yeah. Yeah, I think that fits the topic again to get mass adoption and with developers basically because you're going the direction of giving the tool to the developers and then the community will learn how to use it. So actually a great way to get it out there and then get people, it's kind of educating people as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like we really believe that developers know the users the best. They yeah. know the user experience and we're there to provide the SDKs, the APIs, the tools the case studies, the success stories, oh, yeah. but eventually uh, this is the beauty of uh, blockchain and crypto. Uh, it's decentralized and developers can choose their own implementation and the yeah. way they want to integrate uh, oh, yeah, Keen as yeah. a currency. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think there, I, like, it would be great if you, for example, on the website, showcase some examples on how Kin, Kin is implemented. Yeah, because you showed me before, and then I understood it, like how it's implemented and all of that with some examples. I think that shows it very clearly. Then, yeah. otherwise, it's um, hard to grasp for for people what what it, the monetization looks like. Then, and feels like for the consumers as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I showed you before the experience of Kin inside of Swelly, yeah. which is another app that integrated Kin, and the experience is very good. And what we do is we really publish a lot, like those case studies, mainly on our Medium channel. Yeah. So if you go there, you can actually see like screenshots and like uh, demos of different apps and the way they integrate Kin, oh, okay. and that's a great resource. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I really like it, definitely. I also, I worked with a lot of different apps and I will tell most of them to try it out, definitely. I think if there's a way, they should all try it out, yeah. Because the normal, I know some apps um, that still do it with ads, yeah, normal ads, and it just doesn't work. But that's the last resort and that's when people don't know what else to do. Yeah. So I hope that if the system works and it establish it uh, itself, then I hope that this could be a very good alternative, also where they then make a living from that. Yeah. So yeah. they uh, sustain, because the companies need to sustain and otherwise social apps usually go bankrupt if they don't raise the next funding round. Yeah. Another so. interesting angle is the creator. So when you think about it, most of the content today on the internet is created by actual users. Like yeah. all the videos on YouTube, they are not created by Google, they are created by actual users. Yeah. All the playlists on playlist, for example, are created by users, yeah. right? All the articles on Medium are created by Medium. All the GIFs on Giphy are created by Giphy. And those creators today are also struggling uh, to monetize because they don't see the value that the big companies see. We can think about a uh, gift creator on Giphy, like reaching 200 million views, but not seeing any value out of it. And like if users will use Skin mm. to award creators yeah. with like microtransactions, a creator can receive tons of values from hundreds of thousands of followers. And that value belongs to the creator. No one takes a cut. No one controls that oh value. Yeah. No one can take it away from the creator. Uh, and that is also very, very powerful. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's, I've seen that as well. Basically, a creator, if they also, if they have a million views on their Facebook video, it doesn't mean anything. Like, they can still, like, like it doesn't mean anything. I know people who have, like, because that's what I do, influencer marketing for Silicon Valley, and that's why I work with all these in, um, social apps. And then I did the same for in the crypto world with CoinStats, that's the second largest crypto app, and I'm the CMO there. And um, so basically, um, the creators, uh, for them to monetize is also a very interesting way to do that. Yeah, it's very huge differences. Like there, there are people I know that have tens, tens of millions of views, but they make zero or almost nothing from those views. They go for like comedy, social, um, very viral content, but it's so hard to get any, any monetization in there because once you monetize or to put a brand in there, sometimes it doesn't go viral anymore then. So there's always a trade off. Uh, yeah, we see today creators like already going in this uh, path. So creators today are literally asking their followers for donations. Like, yeah. can you follow me on Patreon? Can you donate through PayPal? But we see the beginning stages of creators telling their followers, can you follow me on a place where I can be awarded yeah. with a cryptocurrency, right? Because then I don't need to beg uh, mm -hmm. for a donation and the value is literally uh, uh, mine, right? Yeah. So we can imagine a future world where like uh, you publish an article on Medium and instead of just getting claps, you're getting keen from uh, tens of thousands of users and you'll be able to take that keen and award like other creators in different apps. Yeah. So we create this uh, decentralized network where value itself belongs to the users and creators mm. and it allows developers a better way to monetize instead of selling their users' data. Oh. Ah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I hope so it establishes like that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, because everyone is looking for a solution like that. Yeah, and we all know that there's a lot of startups trying to solve it, but no one really solved it yet. Yeah, like we look at Steam, there everyone is trying to solve it, and also journalism, online journalism, all of that. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of. Yeah, and as there is so much market competition in the creator world as well. It's it and also on Instagram and all of that everywhere the competition is very hardcore and fierce and only usually only the very big ones it's like a social the big ones they succeed the small ones have a very hard time and this could maybe give the 
um, power back to have smaller ones as well. Yeah. That was a key learning uh, for Kik. So Kik at some point issued uh, Kik points mm -hmm. as an internal currency, but as long as it worked only inside of Kik, right? Yeah. It was uh, this closed garden, and it had no value outside of Kik. It wasn't interesting enough. It couldn't grow. I think that cryptocurrencies, the way we uh, uh, implement Kin, uh, provide a very, very different option because Kin works across different apps, and uh, I think that's a major source for the value. So we're not building a standalone product no. or a closed ecosystem. We're literally empowering developers and encouraging them uh, to integrate Kin instead of like doing their own ICO or instead of. Um, um, going to ads or uh, subscription business models mm. uh, as a way to grow value for the entire ecosystem. Because I think that if many developers integrate Kin, magic happens because now as a developer, I don't need to lock you in as a user, right? Like in the past, I had to uh, yeah, make yeah. you, you stay. You try to l lock them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, lock so them that you can see possible. more ads yeah, yeah. and click on ads. But now I can literally tell you, hey, did you know? Y you can go on uh, Swelly or yeah, on Medlibs yeah. or on like uh, Perfect 365 or on Kick yeah. and actually use Kin there because as a developer, like I don't care where you use the Kin and like the internet becomes again way more open than. It yeah, is that's today. nice. Yeah, yeah. Like we've seen it everywhere. People are trying to s hold users and they don't allow like outside links usually get gain way more uh, less way less traction. Like they're trying to hold them back in the algorithm. So yeah, that's a good way to. Um, bring this all together. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And then the, what's the plan for 2019 now? You like try to get as many developers to jump on board, create awesome products and then get them to use it. And then also you wanted to have the move to the own blockchain fully, right? Fully, m full move. And then, so what's the, and then... So our, our main focus is literally on scaling, both oh. scaling uh, our blockchain and getting it more decentralized, so getting more federation nodes running, yeah. connecting eventually Kin to the major exchanges, but m the main, main focus is really helping and enabling developers to integrate Kin, to build their own apps with Kin, both existing apps that already yeah. have like millions of users and new apps. So I'll give yeah. you like one example. We partnered with Unity, the biggest yeah. uh, engine for game developers, and uh, we're in, uh, introducing uh, in the next few weeks a uh, Unity plugin mm -hmm. uh, that will allow game developers to integrate Keen into their games and oh into wow. their apps. So this is our main focus, really enabling developers and scaling the ecosystem as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah then uh, definitely good luck with that. And I think it's amazing because small developers like the Madlibs guys, I've been working with them for like since three years now and they, they had a hard time to monetize it was not easy, but this uh, hopefully this really establishes itself and can help developers. Uh, that would be amazing. Like they have millions of users, yeah. but to make money with those users in a social environment is yeah. very difficult. So good luck with this, uh, that, Alex. And then and, uh, hopefully we'll hear a lot from you in the future. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.